Okay, this is Hitchin TV. We are in Club 85 with Mr. Brendan B. Brown from the band Wheatus. How you doing, mate? I'm all right, man. How are you? Mustn't grumble. Mustn't grumble. <laughs> um, you've come over from New York, I believe, today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've been in the country for a few weeks now doing the, doing the busted tour, but uh, we arrived in Liverpool uh, from New York May 3rd, I think it was. Wow. It's a long time ago now. Yeah. And how much longer will the tour be going? Uh, another two and a half weeks, I believe we have. We're just about at the midpoint, so. Okay. Yeah. Busy. Busy. Yeah, very. We had, uh, we had one day off the entire tour so far, and that's all we're going to get. That's your opinion on that. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Um, now I know you guys have toured uh, the UK before, um, have you ever been to Hitchin before? Never been to Hitchin, very exciting uh, new experience here today in Hitchin. Sure, and have, um, you, have you seen anything of the town? No, unfortunately I'm a little bit under the weather, I have a chest cold so I'm kind of trying to stay stay still and not move around too much and very drink good. lots of water and all that stuff, yeah. but, uh, but I didn't get a chance to go to your uh, I heard that there's a Sainsbury's around the corner that I'm missing out on. Sounds like <laughs> real tragedy. Yeah, I mean, we've got a Tesco's as well. We better see oh, that for uh, well. you know, the old advertising uh, thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> we've got it all in. Tesco's is, a, you know, I mean, we your supermarkets are so much better than American ones that oh. we just kind of... We get excited about the very prospect, so you know. <laughs> and we don't even know what to do with ourselves in a place like Marks and Sparks. I mean, it's just. Oh, oh man, look at this. Oh, wow, well, I love the way you've come all the way from New York City, where most of us would love to go. <laughs> and you're enthusing about our Sainsbury's, where most of us can't stand me. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what it is? If you travel around America, you get a lot of different, a lot of different qualities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, or versions of quality, I should say. And. Uh, you know what some what some states refer to as food, or you know, is, is definitely at least suspect. So, yeah. <laughs> but here you have this these nice standardizations. You can get the same exact smoked salmon in a that's right. in that's one right. in a in an ASDA or a, or a Tesco's as you can in you know anywhere else. So it's kind of it's neat that way. It's <laughs> it's reliable. <laughs> that sounds good. Uh, so uh, New York City. Um, are you born and bred there, or were you just uh, I was born on Long Island, uh, in a place called Hicksville, <laughs> yeah. um, same town that Billy Joel is from, and uh, I grew up in a town called Northport, which was about an hour outside the city, um, in the sort of uh, mixed suburbs of Long Island, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I moved out of there sometime around 91. I went off to college and I kind of never came back. I moved to New York City after that. So, okay. um, yeah, I've been a New York City resident since 95 ish, 95 or 6 or something like that. 20 years plus? Yeah. Yeah. And um, so I live in Brooklyn now and I have done since 2004. Yeah. Now, what was it that put you on this uh, musical path? What did you used to listen to as a youngster? Uh, well, at, real early I was uh, sort of fascinated with Bobby Darren's Mac the Knife when I was about two years old. I used wow. to stand in front of the mirror and kind of like sing it to myself, like yeah. pretend I was him, you know? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I'm saying yes, I haven't done that too much. <laughs> yeah, right. done that myself, but yeah. Not many people have. Yeah. Um, but uh, I uh, then the first kind of identifying music as a teenager was definitely when I was about well not it was earlier than that I was about nine or ten I discovered AC/DC oh yes and uh, was sort of obsessed with with Angus for for many many years I was Angus for Halloween two years in a row <laughs> um, so real uh, real fanboy on on the AC/DC tip um, for many years still still I wouldn't I wouldn't pass up an opportunity to see them under any circumstances. Ah, um, well we've got something in common there. Yeah. Well, I was just explaining to Tony on the camera here about uh, poor old Brian Johnson's ears. I know. And, I know. Uh, where, where do you stand on the Axl Rose uh, um, quandary? Uh, oh, if I'm completely honest, my, my, my fandom of Axl is much more selective than ACDC. Mm -hmm. uh, I accept ACDC, any record, I just that sound that they make yeah, I see. Is, is for me uh, the ultimate rock and roll. Mm. Uh, Definition, you yeah. know. Um, if I'm an Axel fan, I'm an Axel fan. Uh, when it comes to Use Your Illusion, a few tunes like it, the song "Estranged" in particular um, is a is a I think a masterpiece of his. Um, and Mr. Brownstone is another one I'm really into. But I never really got into uh, got into Guns N' Roses because right around the time that Guns N' Roses emerged, I was discovering 
like Fugazi and like yeah. Quicksand and stuff like that. So I didn't really, Guns N' Roses thing for me was like a little too LA sleaze rock stylistically. Of course, in my adulthood, I came to appreciate how, how hard rocking and awesome it all is, but, yeah. but I can't really call myself a big Guns N' Roses fan. Don't hate them or anything like that. It just wasn't my, it wasn't where I was when I was there, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm a big fan too. Uh, uh, you know, I've seen Axel on the on the internet. It seems to be working. He's doing a good job. But, uh, oh well, he's an incredible vocalist. You know, for me, it was it was always about Malcolm's guitar sound for me. Yeah, Malcolm's was, writing too. Yeah, yeah, um, he was the you know, backbone of it all for me. Uh, funnily enough, the first time I ever saw them in 1987 or 88, I can't remember. Blow up your video tour. I was, uh, you know, it was December of um, December of 87. I saw them at. Uh, Madison Square Garden, I was 13. Oh, wow. And they didn't have Malcolm with them on that show, they had Stevie. Yes, yeah, the same guy who's in right. now, yeah. Right, so, yeah. so the first time I saw them, it wasn't Malcolm. Yeah. Um, I since saw Malcolm a bunch of times, um, but um, he, the guy, I mean, you know, it's really sad, and, and but, I mean, he's done so, so much, so much good writing. I mean, it's not, nothing That's bad it. ever came out of the guy, you know, and it's That's just right. like, just how many how many decades of, of making perfect rock and roll records like you know I know thank I, you Malcolm you know yeah exactly I mean you've got Angus obviously you know you can't you can't go to ACDC without noticing Angus at the front no. Barn Scott in the early years but Malcolm would just quietly stand in the back making that noise and oh that's what he used to do on that on that ratty uh, Gretsch with the missing pickup yeah yeah awesome. I mean like you know just it's like you can. If I think about it, I start having snapshots of my childhood. Yeah. Just listening to it over and over again, driving my mother nuts. Yep. You know. That's it. That's in the, the car with the tape. Yeah, yeah. The power of music to an impressionable young. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, talking of music, uh, tell us a bit about the support bands for tonight's show. Ah, well, uh, our bass player Matthew Milligan and his uh, wife Joey Slater are in a band together called the Ventura Project. Um, and they continue to impress me with their ability to switch genres. On this tour, they've become sort of a synth pop or synth grind band, I guess you could call them. Okay. Very poppy all the same in the songwriting department, but, um, but versatile in terms of their instrumentation. They can wear a lot of hats. Um, Gabrielle Sturbins, you can hear her up there right now. Uh, she's also in Weedis, and she's um, the singer-songwriter kind of Somewhere in between Paul Simon and uh, and uh, Linda Ronstadt, with uh, some Ricky Lee Jones in there. Okay. Sort of, um, yeah, so songwriter stuff. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like it's a bit more on the lighter side than uh, the sound check we just had. Well, yeah, and then she also has a band that she tours with when it's where it's on a little bit on the heavier side. So, okay. You know, we we've seen all kinds with her as well. Um, we're a bit of a family, you know. We're all all together all the time and uh, taking care of each other. She's playing through my guitar rig right now. So. That's all good, that's all good. Now, uh, here we are, as I say, Club 85 in Hitchin. I'm not sure what the capacity is here, but it's a great little venue. Tomorrow night, uh, you're doing the O2 yeah. in, in London. I believe yeah. they can get a few more people in there. Just a bit, yeah. Um, and you're playing with, who is it? Busted. Busted. And Emma Blackery. Okay. Yeah. What time do you guys go on in that? Oh room? man, that's a good question. Um, we typically the show starts around seven fifteen. Emma Blackery gets up there and does her thing. She's pretty incredible. Um, and then we go on around seven forty-five or so. And then uh, then busted is about what are they about eight thirty or eight o'clock? I can't remember. I'm, I'm always packing down in the backstage area when they're going on stage. Oh, so. Right. See, for me, I kind of think. It should be Wheatus and then Busted. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Um, thank you, but yeah. but but my friend James Bourne has such a catalog of songs. The guy just he's written so many. He's had like five top five hits or ten top five hits and three number ones or something like that. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, he is uh, in my book as as far as the people I know. He's a bit, kind of the best songwriter I personally know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, he's. He's just really prolific. He's always working on his musicals. He's got musicals going on, and um, and the guys in the band have come to a place these days that if you go to see the show, you know that they didn't they didn't just do one of these like reunion things where they went for the money or anything. They didn't do that at all. Okay. That show is is it's unbelievable. Deal, yeah, yeah. It's a proper 
rock show that like you know yeah uh, that just the introduction alone you're kind of like oh shit, they really thought about that didn't <laughs> they? you know it's really impressive i i've watched it several times and i'm not even close to board and i've oh, heard it you know in the neighborhood of uh well by the end it'll be 18 times yeah. or plus sound checks so <laughs> you know it's it's like if you can't get bored of something that many times then you know it's good that's but, yeah that's true that is very and true. i think that their new tune um I'm coming home is I think they're in my opinion is the best busted song. They really came came correct on, on coming back out, if you ask me. But, okay. Yeah. Well, in the UK, I'm just a teenage dirtbag baby is is probably what you're best known for. Yeah. Um I can't remember what number it got to in the charts, but it was pretty hard. It was number two. <laughs> number two. It was go. number two. <laughs> yeah, uh, behind a band called Atomic Kitten, or a group called Atomic Kitten, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah, that was back when records sold a lot, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true, yeah. Uh, my good friends in the Georgia Satellites, they got to number two oh, once wow. in the UK. Interesting connection. Our uh, R E R guy at Columbia Records actually signed the Georgia Satellites. Oh, they're great. Yeah, they're, they're great. fantastic rock and roll band. I'm going to see Dan next week. He's playing in London. Super so, cool. Yeah. Tell him you said hello. I will. I will. Yeah. Uh, well, one last question. You're from New York. Uh -huh. uh, what about the Ramones then? Um, well, obviously, they're kind of like our Beatles. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I uh, was fortunate enough to actually, the only time we just ever played CBGB's was opening for Joey, oh, okay. uh, the year before he died. Oh, it's um, about 2000 then. Yeah, mm. in, in August of 2000, we, we played with him there. And Ronnie, yeah. Ronnie Spector was there. And oh, oh, oh. It was, for me, to be honest, it was just too much. Like, I couldn't believe I was really? standing in the same room with the guy, you know? Oh, wow. I mean, I'd bugged him as a fan a few times before that, and I'd played CBGB's before in other bands, but... Yeah. But I'm proud to say that the only show we just ever did at CBGB's was opening for Joey Ramone. Lovely. That's a nice story yeah, for the grandchildren. really nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he was such a, he was like a big teddy bear guy, like who just wanted everyone to kind of be comfortable and yeah. feel, feel like they were supported and all that stuff. And yeah. I guess that came from being, being a little awkward in his own life, you know. Yeah, yeah. He did have his little ways, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, great. Love the Ramones. Yeah. Love him. Beat, um, beat on the Brat's my favorite song. Beat on the Brat? Yeah. Ooh, I'd probably go for um, oh, something off the Leaf Home album, to be honest. Anything off the Leaf Home album. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you can't go wrong. I, the first time I ever heard Beat on the Brat, I was in the trunk of a car. <laughs> yeah. True story. There you go. It's like we said earlier, these, these songs and this music, it, uh, it takes you to places. It sure it? does. Yeah. Forwards and backwards. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much for talking to Hitchin TV today, Brendan. Thanks, um, for, thanks for talking to me. I don't know if you normally answer this question, but what does the B stand for? Uh, I never answer that question. Yeah, somebody told me that, but I had to ask. Thank to you, ask. thank you for asking, but I don't. <laughs> I've, made, I've made up stories and stuff, but you're too nice of a guy. I don't want, I don't want to joke around with you. Oh, good man. You're cool. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate your time, mate. Thanks very much. Have a thank good you. tonight. Thanks for, thanks for having me on.